Now let's move on to some issues. And Freemasons have long been seen by many as a secret society. And they've also uh, been the subject of many conspiracy theories around the world on their activities, with some people even reading meanings into their signs and symbols and, well, their rituals, if I can call it that. And some Freemasons say those negative views about their activities are largely because they've not been open about what they stand for. They are Santino 246 to the second, and uh, former President Johnny Jacon Kufo are built to be present for the book launch of a book titled The Freemasons of the British Council uh, later today. And joining us, Max Olakwakba had a rare access of the Freemasons Hall here in Accra, where he has been interacting with the author of the book, Abraham Jesse. The Masons were responsible for building all these big cathedrals and castles and roads and everything including the White, White House of America, which was built by Masons. So in order to spread, they needed discipline. They needed people to trust each other. They needed to, people to be honest. And they needed people to be qualified to perform tasks. And therefore, they decided that they will utilize the principles of the building trade, enhance the basis, to expand upon a philosophy of life that could be seen to be a way of life, one of doing good for mankind. Freemason says, you can be a Muslim, you can be a Hindu, you can be a Buddhist, you can be a, a Pharisee, you can be a Christian, and, and we have various denominations of Christianity. That is not what Freemasonry concerns itself about. Freemasonry says, we are the children of God under the fatherhood of man. And for as long as you believe in God, you believe in your maker, your religion could be what you want. That's your private matter. Freemasonry does not offer uh, a way to heaven. We don't promise heaven, we don't proselytize. We have no doctrine. Ours is that men should learn to live together in peace and harmony so that they can develop their innate potential and improve towards making this place a better place. Mm. Whether you are Catholic, whatever it is, it's your private matter. Freemasonry does not interfere, but no one can ever be made a Freemason who does not believe in God and who is not to make a public pronouncement of it. You must believe in God, because before anybody can ever become a Freemasonry, we would ask you, in all cases of difficulty and danger, in whom do you put your trust? And if you can, your trust is not in God, that will be the end of any dealings between Freemasonry and you. You can never become a Freemason unless you believe in God. Whatever your religion is private to you, and with the Freemason does not interfere, mm. but Freemasonry expects you to continue to be a good member of your church and work and believe as the church or the mosque or the religion teaches you. We don't interfere. Those things we teach, there is nothing in it incompatible with anyone's religion affiliation. It is not incompatible with your political affiliation. Neither is, is, is it incompatible with civic, moral, or social duties. So anyone can become a Freemason as long as he professes and says publicly and knows God is the architect and the giver of all good things. Without him, nothing has happened. For example, I have heard from some people saying that they say one one of uh, of their members that they were able to raise raise the person, and they will ask him what happened to him, who killed him, so that they go and show the person, or all, all kinds of things. All these are not true. But even plain criminals who want to do people will do anything and say we are lost people. So the word lost people have been used 
purely in its negative sense to represent all manner of wrongdoings. That is why today, and we admit part of the fault is ours. We didn't talk to people about what we do. This is, this is the reason why I've written this book. 300 years ago, when modern Freemasonry as we know it came into being, our forefathers, they never usually would talk to those who are not Freemasons about our, about our, about our fraternity. Even here in Ghana, as I was growing up, you will find that our old men in our villages, in our, in our communities, they won't talk to their families about Freemasonry, they won't talk to their children, and therefore they acquired a certain aura of mysticism around them. Somehow, the old people enjoyed it. They, they, it made them feel very important. Where I'm standing is called the Westfield Master's Chair. When we meet, the first portion of our meetings may be described as business meeting, like any other organization. So this is the place where the chairman or the managing director, or in our case, the master of the Lord, who's in charge of the Lord. When we are in session, this is where he sits. So the first part is to talk about normal things. Minutes of previous meetings, deliberations on the minutes, and matters that are meant to be discussed. And a few other, what you may call administrative or regular affairs of the Lord. You see, and for us, this is excellent training ground, management training for our members. And to be able, for, for some, this is the only place where they may have actually received sound business and management training. Then after the first portion of the meeting, then the second portion then details the business of the day, why we had come to meet for that day. We talk about how a man is born and the responsibilities that reside in him. His responsibility to his sovereign of his native land, the responsibility to his family, the responsibility to his children, the responsibility to the society in which he lives, and how he can contribute his own quota towards making the nation, the community, the family, and how he can also improve upon himself. One man at a time. He meets people on the streets and he asks them about Freemasonry. The first thing that comes to mind, I mean, a lo lot of things I don't want to, I'm sure you've heard some of them. Yeah, evil. Want, yeah, evil, yeah. I'm sure you want to share some of those perceptions out there about Freemasonry. First, I, I'd like to say that I am the first in my family to be a member of the uh, Freemasons fraternity. My late big sister was a member of the Odd Fellows. Yeah. We have common ideas, uh, but we do things slightly differently. So I didn't know anything about it. And probably at some point in time, I also had misgivings about what people who appeared uh, to be meeting in, in, in private and uh, hidden chambers do. But I was meant to join. So as much as I tried to keep away, I was found out and brought in. And uh, when I got in, I began to understand what masonry is about. And it's been since 1976 that I've been in the craft. Uh, for some time after being a public servant, um, we were told during the uh, revolution of the young soldiers uh, that we shouldn't belong to the order. So I stayed away for some time, but the edge was there, so I came back. I think by 1987, I returned, and I have been very active in the craft, so I understand. Those who say uh, that the craft is uh, made up of people who are against 
cries who are against true religion do so out of uh, ignorance. They haven't even tried to get some of our people to join so they could report back. See, they just write us off. Um, I think it's a pity because a crowd, as we call it, uh, means much better than they ascribe to us. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel when you hear some of those negative things? I think it's a pity. Like I've said, I feel a sense of pity for those who accuse us uh, from the position of ignorance. They don't even know what we are doing and they conclude that uh, they must be evil. Why must they be evil? Because they meet behind closed doors. They must be evil because they don't allow women to join. They must be evil because they don't allow any, every time they can hurry to join. They haven't bothered to find out why we make sure that those who join have certain qualifications. Mm. But um, why, why don't you allow women to join the I'm sure a lot of people will be curious to know. Uh, I must say that we are not the only group mm. that says it's a men's club. Mm. Uh, perhaps we are different in the sense that people think that we are behaving as if we're doing a religion. Mm. And you know women like religion very much. So if there was something good that we're doing, they also want to be a part. Mm. Uh, historically, we've tried to do it without women. And you know why certain institutions were run by men without the women folk. At the moment, some countries, including England, is making it possible, are making it possible for women who are interested in our teachings to form their own lodges. Uh, we help them. The instructions that we give to our men folk, we are willing to give to the women that they should do it again. Uh, the things that we do in masonry cannot be described as religion, but at best they are religious. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think, because in the past you've not been able to, um, you've always maintained some form of, you've not really done an open door policy sort of, allowing people in to come and see for themselves. That's why some of this perception is continue to first down. We, historically, the coming into being of Grand Lodges was, was the effort of some individuals in society, well placed, who didn't like the cheating that was going on, slavery and uh, people being kept subjugated and, 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 and the inequality in life. So the essence of the craft was to try and bring some equality among men to remove uh, religious uh, uh, hatred, Reli uh, religious fanaticism. And, and bring us all into a common human approach to life. And so if you want to do that, then you do not just bring anybody in. You select the people who have what it takes to be leaders, to influence society, towards good naturedness, to do good things. Um, you are not bringing people in because they want to come and see somebody they look up to as a big man so they can go and rub shoulders and start asking for favors. That, that's not what we're doing. We want people who have what it takes to help society at large, to influence people's behavior towards goodness. So we look carefully at who we invite. Great. Finally, um, yeah. the message to, to, I mean, to the people out there, to the world. Mm -hmm. Freemasonry has been here with us for many years in its organized form, structured as Grand Lodges. It's been here uh, for 300 years. From that time to today, we've, have, we've had our ups and downs. People have come, they have enjoyed what we do and they've really taken part. 
Along the line, they do have social problems here and there, social poles here and there. And some will say, right, I joined Masonry because I thought I would see something. Perhaps some thought it's a magical society where you join and we, we give the word and you become rich overnight. And I, some people, since President Kupo was announced as having become a senior warden of Grand Lodge of uh, uh, England, have knocked at our doors wanting to become members because they think like Sakawa. As soon as you become a Mason, yeah, you become rich. Uh, this is not it. So they should come because we want to take them from their natural habitat in the society and try and polish them some more.